Hi there, good morning. Some pretty nice street art here. Normally I am not uh, much of a fan of most of it, especially on beautiful historical buildings or any sort of buildings really, but uh, in this case it's uh, add some color to this underpass. So here's the bus station here in Pristina, capital of Kosovo or Kosova. I'm going to uh, catch a bus somewhere, preferably to Peya, and if uh, it's going to be too long of a wait or whatever, then otherwise maybe to Mitrovica. So let's uh, get over there, find out the bus times, and uh, get out of Pristina, see a little something more of Kosovo here on my last day, flying out tomorrow. And what a beautiful day it is, March 19th, sunny but uh, still chilly. All right, Stesioni e Autobusiv, Pristine. Let's figure out the situation. Okay, so uh, this is the bus to Peya. There are not many buses. 11. Okay, what time is it now? It is a ways from 11. Dang, I really want to see Peya. I wonder if there might be uh, like minibuses going more frequently. Today is a Saturday, so maybe that's a factor. So where else we got Kline uh, Istog Vrel Le Banye Skinderaj It is not very busy. It's got to be a, a Saturday effect. I haven't heard of any of these places. Prizren, I've been there. Ferizaj, Rahovet. What about Mitrovica, Yakove? Now that's uh, a town I was curious to see, but it's at 11. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's figure something out. Just checked the time. I didn't realize it is 11:53. I thought it was earlier. So uh, this is leaving in five minutes. So gonna go for it, even though. Getting back will then be an issue if there are only two buses a day, so I'll have to uh, find out when the bus is coming back. It should be an hour and a half or two to get to Peya.
The bus going back to Pristina there. Great news in the bus department. They do not go twice a day. They go once every 20 minutes. So the times on the bus was maybe just that bus or something. So uh, that leaves things a lot more flexible for me to explore and then head back when I want to. So this is Peya. It looks really cool and those mountains are just phenomenal. So the uh, first thing that I'm going to try to do is get out of town and get closer to the mountains. There's a bus that goes at 3 o'clock. It is now 12.45 or something like that. And I don't want to wait for that bus. So I'm going to uh, inquire about a taxi. We got some up here. Hello. Rugova? Yeah. How much? Rugova. Rugova Canyon Viewpoint. Canyon... Uh, Volga. Which is good, good village? Volga. Volga? Yeah. How much? Ah, 30 euros. Yeah. There and... No, because it's only... Yeah. Kilometer. Kilometer. No meter. Kilometer. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 20, 20, huh? Yeah. Rugova and then Serbian Monastery. Church. Serbian Church. Monastery. Yeah, so... Yeah. Viewpoint? Yeah. Monastery. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. At 20? No. Yeah. I see. No. I see. 40. Yes. Yep. Okay. These are the accursed mountains. So uh, what happened there with the negotiations with the uh, taxi driver is that I had seen a viewpoint that was quite close to town, but he misunderstood where I actually wanted to go and thought that it was somewhere further away, which it turns out is just as well, even though it was more expensive. So it was 35 euros round trip, around uh, 40 bucks there. He wanted to take me to Bolge, which sounded like a nice, uh, like, mountain town, I guess. But it was an hour further from Peya. I didn't want to spend that much time in uh, a vehicle and then another hour to go back. And so this is like, I don't know, maybe halfway-ish or something. So uh, just getting kind of a taste of the mountains and this camp here. So Rugova Camp. I'm guessing there's hiking trails. I can see one over there and so obviously a like winter camp area maybe for families and then you do snow sports and also summer I imagine hiking and biking and whatever else to do up in the mountains so let's uh, just investigate a little bit as much as I can considering that there's a lot of snow and I just got regular 
shoes on here, but uh, let's get into it for a little ways. Pretty cool. Little cabins, restaurant there, creek running through the valley, a tiny little windmill, or that's not a windmill. I guess it should be a water wheel, whatever it is. So on the way back, he's going to drop me at something I am really excited to see, a monastery. Monastery or church. Really cute little cabins. But uh, where are the people? Nobody around, so what is the uh, normal season? Is it earlier in the winter when there's more snow? Or is it more of a summer destination? I don't know, here's the uh, reception. I think I heard some voices. But uh, there's just nobody here. Yeah, somebody uh, down there, one car. Maybe they're sort of getting ready for spring. All uh, boarded up there. Hello. Hello. Good. How you doing? You work here? Yes. You getting ready for spring? Yes. When is more people in winter or summer? Summer. Summer. Summer is more popular. I see. Okay. Just looking around, uh, I got a taxi from uh, Peya, uh -huh. just to see the mountains a little bit. So, okay. just walking, walking around. And then back to Paya. Would like to eat some to drink? Oh, I just uh, ate a little while ago, so okay. I'm okay. Thank you very much. You. Yep. We got some animal tracks here. Something dog-like. A little bit strange. Two there, and then third and fourth there. And then here, something else. Hello? Obviously nobody has been in here anytime recently because the uh, door is blocked. Alright, well, uh, got a little taste of the mountains. Not a fully for real mountain adventure, but uh, today is my last day. Just wanted to see a little bit more of... Uh, Kosovo beyond the main cities of Prizren and Pristina and I have to say I am impressed this is a really really interesting country for being so little known not a tourist destination at all especially beyond you know the Balkans but uh, it should be Pristina is a Really cool city. Prizren is lovely. There's mountains, snow, lakes, a lot more to see. I will be happy to come back again at some point and see more.
Yeah, when the... So I think when I was looking on Google Maps for a viewpoint, this was the viewpoint. I was thinking it would be, you know, looking down into a valley. It's just a, uh, like, little... Things sticking out over the river, and then you're looking up at the canyon. The Patriarchate of Pech Monastery. Pech is another name for Peya, the city. So the uh, city of Peya, right there. A little walk up to the monastery and it should be really beautiful, especially inside. So I'm going to read a little bit about the monastery as I walk along here. The Patriarchate of Pech Monastery, or the Patriarchal Monastery of Pech, is a medieval Serbian Orthodox monastery located near the city of Peja, Kosovo. Built in the 13th century, it became the residence of Serbian archbishops. It was expanded during the 14th century, and in 1346, when the Serbian Patriarchate of Pech was created, the monastery became the seat of Serbian patriarchs. The monastery complex consists of several churches, and during medieval and early modern times, it was also used as a mausoleum of Serbian archbishops and patriarchs. Since 2006, it is part of the medieval monuments in Kosovo, a World Heritage Site. And so, if you're wondering about the conflict in Kosovo, the dispute of independence, Serbia claims Kosovo is part of Serbia, Kosovo claims independence, so that gives you a little clue. We are here near the Albanian border, a long ways from the Serbian border, a couple of hours away, so deep into Kosovo, and yet a Serbian church and monastery here. So this land was occupied by Serbs centuries ago and for a long time by the sounds of it, but it is now occupied by Albanian-speaking people. Kosovo is 92% Albanian Muslims and only a few percent Serbian now, but at one time it was Serbian land. And so that gives you a idea of why there's a dispute going on here is Serbia says, hey, we have all these churches and monasteries. We used to live there. Our, you know, kings and families and civilization occupied this land and now it is no longer theirs. So that's the uh, situation in a nutshell. Here it is. Wow, it looks uh, really amazing. Fourteenth century, twentieth century, fourteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth, thirteenth. So uh, many phases of building this place. Wow, man, it's pretty impressive. X V I I. So seventeenth century, sixteen hundreds. So I have to thank one of my viewers who sent me a video link and said, check this out if you want to learn some more about Kosovo. And it was basically talking about the Serbian history in Kosovo. And it mentioned this uh, monastery and I'd wanted to come to Peja anyways. And then I saw that the monastery was right next to Peja and so it was perfect to uh, visit both. So the uh, church there is what's going to be the most magnificent thing to see, the uh, frescoes on the inside.
So there is the entrance into the monastery. Here you can see Boge. That is the uh, town that the taxi driver was recommending, Boga, I think. 28 kilometers, so only 20 miles, but uh, Google Maps was showing it was 55 minutes because it is a windy road there. And then the uh, monastery is just on the edge of Peya. Or Pech. And here you can see Accursed Mountains. Hiking and biking trails, that would be fun. So there's Boga. We drove like somewhere along there maybe. Looks beautiful. I will have to come back to Kosovo sometime in the summer. Looks amazing. Via Ferrata, zip lining, hiking, climbing, archery, caving, snowshoeing, paragliding. Let's check out the town a little bit before I catch my bus back to Pristina. So uh, the thing to do in Peya would be to have a Peya beer. See there you can see. Bira Peya. I've had them before in Kosovo. But I will be sitting on a bus and they don't have bathrooms, so I will wait until I get back to Pristina and have one there. So you got your mosque and the church, and that kind of represents the uh, different, you know, Albanian and Serbian as well, Christian and Muslim. All right, well, uh, I'm just going to head for the bus station, catch the next bus back to Pristina. I am wiped out, traveled out, adventured out, filmed. It's been an intense five or six weeks or so of filming since I started this trip in Mexico. And uh, I'm ready for a little bit of a break, not a big break. So tomorrow I'm flying to London, United Kingdom. Been there before, filmed videos there before, and so I'm not going to be really focusing much on filming. Maybe I'll film one or two videos or something, but uh, basically it's a good place to go uh, it's like easy, English is spoken of course, and uh, just kind of get into the editing and get caught up because at the moment I am like six videos behind of editing and I want to get that caught up before I move on to another adventure somewhere. So I will head there and stay a week or something like that. Enjoy amazing London as spring is on its way here and then be thinking about where I want to go next. I do not know for certain where I'm going next. I haven't booked another onwards flight yet, but definitely thinking about India, thinking about maybe Sri Lanka, Egypt, Tunisia, Thailand, of course, would be nice. The world is finally opening back up again. And things are looking a lot better for traveling with minimal testing, Requirements, United Kingdom, nothing. No test required, no vaccination card required. You can just uh, fly in as normal. So, that's great news. I hope you enjoyed this Kosovo adventure. Really interesting country. Very glad that I finally came here. Got a taste of it. There is definitely much more to see of Kosovo. It would be great to get up into the Accursed Mountains further and go hiking. More towns to check out, more 
monasteries and mosques, lakes, delicious Kosovo food, all at a very, very reasonable price. So, I may be back. Take it easy.